prayer happens all day long. Our life is entirely centered on prayer and on God, the contemplative life. Our goal is to pray continually. The candy making is one of the best jobs for that. A lot of people think, here's prayer, here's work. Mysticism brings the two together. And we're not supposed to sneak a candy, but sometimes it happens, you know. It's hard to explain monasticism in a few words. It's a form of life. It's a way of life. It's got a very long tradition, not only in the Catholic Church, but in religious life, Zen Buddhism, and so forth. A monastery is supposed to supply for itself all its needs. In our day and age and culture, we can't do all of that, but we do a lot. And that's really why manual labor is so important to us, as well as a regular life of prayer. It forms a balance in our life, and that's terribly important. We were founded in 1964 from Rentham, Massachusetts. After World War II, there was a great influx to like all the monasteries in the United States, so they were making foundations all over the place. I came here in 1999. I entered pre-Vatican when I was 14 years old. So I've been in religious life over 50 years. I was interested in Trappist life, and there are only four monasteries of Trappist women in the country at that time. There's five now. I'm from New Jersey originally. I'd never been west of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania when I came out to the monastery. Let us go to God's house. Iowa was wonderful to live in. We're very fortunate to be here in Iowa, so. I actually wrote to two monasteries, and I didn't hear from one, even though I wrote twice, so that seemed to be God's way of saying it's going to be Iowa. I am from Connecticut. I came with the foundresses in 1964. The community of Wrentham, where I entered and that founded this monastery, made candy. A Greek candy maker taught them how to make caramel, and it was a very secret formula. It still is, in a sense. When they sent us to Iowa, they intended that we develop our own industry. So we started trying to make cookies. Well, cookies was really a flop. They break, they burn. It was not a pretty picture for the first year. So we called home and said, would you mind teaching us how to make caramel in Iowa? And so they did. We started in 65, 1965. So we celebrated our 50th anniversary of caramel making a couple of years ago. Most years we cover close to 100% of our annual normal operating expenses, and most of that is through the candy business. Our staple is the caramel. That's what we're really known for. Something along the line of 30 tons a year, I think, of caramel in one form or another. My favorite is the hazelnut melt-away. My favorite candy is the hazelnut melt-away. Oh, I love those. And it's probably between the melt-aways and the Swiss mints, actually. It's absolutely delicious. It has salt and milk chocolate. And it has a little hazelnut. Well, that's, that's irresistible. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. The caramels are wonderful, and we understand why people buy them, and they are good. But we see a lot of caramels. <laughs> we try to work in relative silence and pray while we're working. It's really difficult. Some people stress discipline. Let me give you an example. The caramel machine puts out 185 caramels a minute. 
I can machine about three strips a minute. So you're packaging about 250 caramels a person per minute. And you can come at that job. Okay, we gotta hurry, or you can't keep up and everything's all right. Or you can come at it very focused and get even more done sometimes. It's not just silence. Mm, I hardly have the word. Prayer can take any form the human person can give. I believe that prayer is more involved in intentionality, being who I am as fully as I can be for God at this moment. I'm not making chocolate to be part of some kind of a mega business, a conglomerate, or whatever. I'm making it simply to live, and to live as everyone else does, and to bring prayer to that work, and to use it as a means of being part of the world. That's all.